foodie folks and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be about one of my all-time favorite holiday foods. Brisket. Jewish style brisket for Hanukkah. Also, in another video this week, I'm going to be doing latkes, which makes for the perfect Hanukkah meal. Brisket and latkes. All right, foodie folks, grab yourself a snack and a beverage. And because this is a food channel, I want details. Let me know in the comments down below what said snack and beverage are. And let's get started with the brisket recipe. All right, foodie folks, let's get started. Now, the recipe I use is actually a commercially based recipe. Um, I got it in a recipe book. I don't remember the name of it. Probably 20 years ago from my sister, Debbie. Um, and it's Knack Waxman's Brisket of Beef. You can find it online. I'll put a, uh, all the ingredients down below in the description. But if you Google Knack Waxman's Brisket, N-A-C-H, um, you can pull it up. I, in fact, the one that I have saved is from epicurious.com. So it's a great, simple brisket recipe. So I sort of am going to have the recipe for this particular meal. Typically, I make more than this. Um, it calls for a six pound brisket, uh, but this is just a three pound brisket. So I'm sort of going to have all the ingredients well, except for the garlic, because I always double the garlic. So, all right, here we go. So here's a three pound brisket flat, uh, not a point, a point obviously has a point and this has to be trimmed. So what the recipe says is to trim just a little fat cap, leave a little fat cap on top. And this is actually pretty good. Uh, sometimes you get some real thick fat, but the reason why we want the fat is it'll render down and keep everything juicy and just be delicious. So uh, the other ingredients are tomato paste, uh, a carrot, so uh, sliced onions. The recipe calls for eight. This is actually five large onions. I like to use uh, sweet onions. I just like the flavor better. If onion, bothers you and you start crying like with Spanish onions or white onions or especially red onions, I find that the sweet onions have less of that sulfur that makes your eyes water and cry and stuff. A uh, couple cloves of garlic and some flour for dusting as well as salt and pepper. So basically you want to dust this, put a nice little coat on it. I have my deli cup here. Okay, uh, now we have a little salt and pepper. Kosher salt, not because it's brisket for Hanukkah, but because kosher salt is better. And um, it's a thick piece of meat. Feel free to season liberally or heavily, if you will. And then uh, we're just gonna turn this bad boy over. Grab the salt. Grab the pepper. All right, here we go, boys and girls. I have to get the uh, burner set up with the pot and I'm gonna talk about the pot a little bit and uh, stand by. All right, foodie folks, here is my Le Crusade, Le, Le Crusade, it's French, I don't know how to say it, but it's basically a cast iron pan, enamel coated. They're a little expensive. I've had this for probably 15 years. It works great. It was a gift, I didn't buy it, but I would buy another one if I needed one. Um, they're fantastic. I'll put a link, an Amazon affiliate link down below. You could check it out. Um, but here we go. We gotta cook the brisket. Take my squeeze bottle full of uh, oil. Now this recipe calls for corn oil. I just use whatever vegetable or, or canola oil I have because uh, that's what I do. And we are gonna put the brisket right in to get a nice sear. That's the sound you want to hear. All right, now. While that's cooking, I'm gonna be prepping for my next video. Why don't you guys watch this with some really cool fast music and uh, I'll be back. About six, seven minutes per side is what we want and I'll show you that through the process. Look at the goodness. 
That's it. We'll let this side go for a little while and be, be done. Stand by. All right, foodie folks, that side is done. Now we gotta get the edges. All right, I'm gonna take the brisket off and let it rest on a plate. Then I'm gonna take my onions, which by the way, I used a food processor for because chopping all these onions would take forever. I don't see a problem with that. Now, we want to brown these or caramelize these without browning them. So we're gonna turn the heat down. I'm gonna add some more kosher salt. When you uh, sweat or brown onions like this, the kosher salt will help pull the moisture out. Then I'm gonna season also with some fresh cracked black pepper you got a season then i'm gonna stir and that's basically just to move around the seasoning make sure everything gets coated nicely now we're gonna let these go for a while um when we cook these they're basically gonna disintegrate into nothing and just deliciousness just on oniony just oniony deliciousness so this is gonna take a while. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna film this. So, you guys, uh, when you guys come back, it'll be ready to put the brisket in the oven, and I'll tell you all about that. So, stand by. All right, fishy folks. About 15 minutes later, you can see the onions. They're uh, they're sweated down. They haven't gotten much color, which is exactly what we want. And you can see how much water they've they've released, which is fine. That's gonna be part of the gravy or the sauce. All right, here we go, folks. We're gonna take our brisket. Now, the fat cat did get a little caramelized, more than I wanted. Some people would call that burnt. I call that caramelized because it's delicious. The recipe calls for three tablespoons of tomato paste. And let me show you my cool, uh, this is a Zis, I think is the name of the brand. Z-Y-L-I-S-S, Zillis, Zillis. Anyway, uh, I love this can opener. So it's got a lock, but what, here's what I like about it. Once you close it, it locks into place. So you don't have to, you know, if you have weak hands, you don't have to do that. You could just, like Lucas, my eight-year-old, can open cans. All right, I'm gonna take a cake spreader, a cake spreader, a frosting spreader for cakes, take about three tablespoons, spread it on like frosting, If you put more, it doesn't matter. If you put less, it might matter. The tomato paste will, uh, the acid in the tomato paste will help break down the fat and the other fibers that cause brisket to be tough. Then we put our carrot in there, which is really just for flavor. And uh, we're gonna eat it. We're gonna put our garlic in there. I don't know if you saw me, I dropped one. And then we're gonna check the recipe, make sure I'm not forgetting anything, which I'm not. We put the lid on, we put it into a 370 degree oven for one hour and a half. That is 90 minutes, all right? You stand by through the magic of editing. When we come back, I'm gonna take it out of the oven. There's gonna be more steps though, so don't get your hopes up like we're gonna be eating soon. Stand by. All right, foodie folks. It's been in the oven for about an hour and a half at 350. I've turned the oven down to 325. I've taken it out. Now. In most cases, you're not gonna cut a piece of meat as soon as you take it out of the oven because you want all those juices to be able to stay in the meat. If you cut a steak right after you take it off the, the grill, say, all the juices is gonna run out, it's gonna be a dry piece of crap. This doesn't matter that much because it's going back into the oven in the onion juice deliciousness to get delicious, all right? So I'm gonna just take my slicing knife and slice nice thin pieces. And then we're gonna put it back into the oven. It's really not that tender right now, but then we're gonna put it back in the oven for another two hours. A couple of people have asked me about this knife. It is a Japanese knife. We obviously did buy it in Japan. Um, every time I'm in Japan, I typically buy myself a knife, at least starting uh, the last two times. I've been to Japan about 12 times, um, but there's a restaurant supply street called Kapabashi Street and you can buy all kinds of restaurant things there. I don't know if you've ever seen 
in a restaurant, but like the fake plastic food, they have whole stores dedicated to that uh, there at Kapabasha Street in Japan. But you buy everything there. There's a bunch of different knife, shop, knife shops. And uh, I shop at basically two different ones usually. They speak English. They have the best prices. Uh, they offer duty-free, which is nice. And um, they're really helpful, so... All right, folks, I'm down here to the end. I don't want to damage the knife with the fork, so I'm just gonna, just gonna turn it around like this, hold it like this. Try not to, there we go. Okay. Now, the recipe states, put it back in the oven for another two hours at 325. Just let it go. When that's done, it'll be time to eat. Stand by. All right, foodie folks. Two hours later, the house smells amazing. I can't wait, here we go. Look at the deliciousness. Got the carrot in there so we know it's healthy. All the onions have pretty much disintegrated into oniony deliciousness. And the brisket is really pull apart tender with a capital T tender. All right, I'm gonna plate it up and try it. Just wait. All right, foodie folks. Look at it in all its deliciousness. The onions are spectacular. Sweet and delicious. The carrot, cooked perfectly. A little soft for me, actually. Tastes good, though. Now the meat. So, it's brisket. You should need a knife, right? Nah. No knife needed. This is good stuff, people. Takes a long time to cook. Brisket has become a little pricey, but for the holidays, especially Hanukkah, this is the go-to meal. Hope you guys liked it. Leave a comment down below if you have any Hanukkah traditions or Christmas traditions for your meals. I might do one of those videos too, believe it or not. And of course, if you haven't done so already, do me a favor, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment and uh, give me a thumbs up. Have a great day. There's another thing I like. That release, but then this. Of course, it's not working on camera. This. Boom! You don't have to touch it.